If you were like in a, in a cartel or a gang, what would you think your role would be in that? Because I think about that a lot. Because when I try to build a business or an organization, even a team, I look at it like, I think these, these criminal organizations, they got the best org chart. They got the best organizational chart because they got people with different strengths, right? Like right. If you study the mafia, um, the, the Italian mafia, I think they had probably the best structure only because when, um, I, I believe it was Joe Valenti in like the 60s who had sat on, I think he was the first one to flip mm -hmm. and then ultimately give out the structure of everything. You have your boss, underboss, conciliar, Captain. You want to elaborate and on what the, all these people do? Yeah, so, so then go. ultimately the boss is whoever runs the yeah, entire yeah. family. The mm -hmm. underboss is like the number two. The consulier is the advisor right. of the family. And then you have captains that oversee the button men Everything. who are the yep. soldiers underneath. They're like managers. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, and then of course associates are people who are not in the family. They're right. just from the outside and i think across all different criminal organizations you have your um all of those different positions then uh you have the political influence those would be right. fall under associate mm -hmm. um the drug dealers uh, uh earners there's people right. within the soldiers that are primarily their job is to go out and make money there's others who are enforcers and stuff like yeah. that for me I would probably be an associate. I wouldn't want to be a boss who runs said family because, of course, you have to insulate yourself yeah. and everything. And I like to be outside. I can right. be a behind-the-scenes kind of person, but if I was inside of a criminal organization, I'd much rather be an associate to where I'm connected, but I'm not. Yeah. So I mentioned MC Hammer on the prior episode. I think I'd be something like that because I know I'm a talent. You're, you're so outside, would, yeah. Okay. I'd have to be in front, but if I'm way too connected, yeah. it can now bring everything down. I'd rather be, if I was inside of it, I'd be somebody who's somewhat of an earner, but an associate on the outside. Right. Or... If there was another position to take and I was supposed to play more of the background, I'd be like an, avi an advisor, like a conciliar, yeah. a treasurer. Well, maybe yeah. not so much treasurer because I wouldn't want to deal with the money right. because it's only a matter of time before somebody skims it. And if I'm the one who has to now bring it to the boss and say, hey, we got this, this, they this, They chop this, your this. fingers off. Exactly. Because yeah. there's more than enough times to where if something is missing, if you can't identify who's the problem, you become the problem. I think, so I'm not, I don't want to have that happen. So I when I look at smoke. organizations like that, funny enough, with any of my businesses, I always build it like it's like a mafia or a criminal organization. I know it sounds weird. We don't do anything illegal. But I think they have some of the best organizational structures because it's efficient. And because it's upheld by like the thought of violence, people mm -hmm. are less likely to like fold, right? Like in, in a job, in a corporation, you could have employees and since they're just getting a paycheck, they could be like, ah, I'm gonna be a lazy fuck and not work, right? In the mafia, you get someone like that, they just cut your legs off. And as incentive, not only the fear of possible violence, the more money that you make yeah. for the family, the more money you make. Yeah. Like even when they, whenever they talk about like, the freaking Gambino family or, or, right. or the uh, the Genovese and everything of that nature. But they're talking about people. Michael Francisi is still alive till this day. They were making like $5 million a week. Oh, that's crazy. Through their gas scam. They had that's generated crazy. billions of dollars. But the thing is, uh, or I should say tens of millions. I don't think they had reached a billion, but they always yeah. inflate their numbers. But with all of that money, even if you were somebody who brought in like 10 million, you still would have to cut the percentage Everybody, to where yeah. you're seeing it. So you have to have an understanding of, hey, if I made the family 10 million and I'm only walking away with 750 grand, the family would acknowledge like, hey, this guy's an earner. We're gonna wanna protect this dude. So right. you also have to have the ego of, although I brought all of this shit, I have to understand I'm part of something bigger than just myself. Because anybody with a brain would look at it like, hey, these guys might, you know, do some violence to me if I don't give them their money. Yeah. But I have $10 million. What if I get my own protection? Or and then now you're in a war. So you have right. to have an understanding. That's why it's important to having a good team. The way I look at it, I think, I hate saying this because I feel like this is the cliche answer, but I feel like I would have to be the boss. Because I like, I'm a builder. That's my main thing. I'm a builder. I don't like mm -hmm. having anyone else above me. I don't like anyone telling me what to do because mm -hmm. that's where it goes bad. I have like a really blatant disregard for authority. Um, so I need to be the one calling the shots and building because I'm good at that. I'm good at like, and I think more than that, I'm good at like lifting other people. If people just listen to me, their lives change because they all start making a bunch of money. Like this, this month I had a, a payroll that was over a hundred grand and every single person underneath me, their fucking lives changed. They made a fuckload of money. And even TJ, who would be technically the underboss from the boss, he's the underboss because he manages a lot of my operation. He made a lot of fucking money. He made more money than he's ever made in his life. 
because of that, I think that's why I would be good at being the boss because everyone that works for me, they all their lives change because mm -hmm. we have him and then we have someone that's under him, which is kind of like a manager. I don't know what you would say there. Underneath, so it'd be it'd like, be like a, so the if I'm the boss, he's the underboss. Yeah, like, yeah, we have a captain. You'd have a bunch of like captains, yeah. We have salespeople and those, those are earners. Yeah. We have uh, customer support people and like coaches mm -hmm. who are, I yeah, guess. Yeah, those would be more associates with the coaches because they're more on yeah. the outside. They have their own stuff going on, but they would help you with different stuff. Well, I think that would be like right. Julian would be like uh, an associate because right, right, he's, right, he's right, a. Right, 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 yeah. He helps and then he advises on a lot of that stuff. So it's like I have a big organization. I have people that fit in every single spot and everyone's making a lot of money because of it. And my job is just mm -hmm. to kind of like point everyone in the right direction and make sure they listen to me. Because keep when, everyone in line. When I think when I think of like the the advisor, like the, the what would be the consulier, uh, who is like your checks and balances? Who keeps you accountable and everything? So that's what I'm saying. I, I think it would have to be like Julian. Okay. Because everyone else. I don't really trust them with business because they haven't really built businesses. Julian's mm -hmm. a very analytical guy. Mm -hmm. um, so he's the one that can like question if I have a decision. And a lot of our meetings go like this. I'll, I'll say, hey, guys, do this. Everyone does it, right? Julian's the only one that will question me and that's not afraid to question me. Hey, hey, what, like, why this? Is the reasoning behind that? Like, isn't it this or this? Um, and he'll send me voice messages too where it'll be like that. It's, it, that's, where, that's where so it's say, the hey, most do, important. I'll send him, hey, do this. And he'll respond, well, if we do this, then you have to think about this and this. And he covers a lot of the blind spots, which is uh, pretty awesome. So I don't know. The way I look at it, I think there's, a, there's a checks and balances. That are like, so great example, right? Um, I said, hey, we should build this and do this. And he would send me something like, So he gives his feedback. It's long, but it's like mm -hmm. he'll, he'll give a whole thing, like voice message of like, hey, this is why this wouldn't work. This is mm -hmm. some of the issues I foresee. So yeah, I'm, I think I'm good at building the org because everyone around me is making, right. a, everyone under me is making life-changing amounts of money. Obviously, mm -hmm. I'm making a lot of money, but I'm good at organizing it and building. So I like that idea of being the, the boss because I don't think I fit anywhere else. Okay. I have a disregard for authority. I can't take directions from someone. See, for me, I, to a certain degree, have that same problem. But because I'm somebody who likes to hold other people accountable and I like to be held accountable as well, I think the best spot for me would either be that advisory spot or an associate to where I'm kind of distant. But overall, for me, I would definitely be there. But I would ask you this one. What position do you think you would never take? Never. Enforcer. Hmm. Enforcer. Because enforcers are the dudes that, like, are the ones that force, like, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they're the ones that, like, ha I'm not good with confrontation. Don't get me wrong. I'm good with confrontation. I just don't want to be the one confronting people. So right now, like, my underboss, TJ, he's the one that anytime we have to fire people, I don't want to talk to people. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to fire someone. I don't want to hear your sob story about this or that or, like, oh, my God, I'm going to lose my job. Take that off my table. I understand. Boo-hoo, sad. But, like, someone else can handle it. So as an enforcer, you're the guy that's chopping limbs off. You're the guy that's taking people out. You're the guy that's fixing things. I'm not uh, good at that. I don't like confrontation. I don't mind. I don't feel bad for the people because if, if we're chopping their arms off, obviously something has occurred that they need to get their arms chopped off, right? Like great example, we just fired a girl because we checked to see if she was doing her job. I'm quiet too. I watch. So we see that she didn't do her job for four days. Um, and I was like, all right, cool. Just take. So this is literally like how we, how we handle it. We took away all of her access. We didn't let her know. And we waited until she responded. Mm. So we took all. She said something like we took yeah. So three days later, four days later, she's like, "Hey, I lost my access. I can't get in." I'm like, oh, crazy. And then we let her know, "Hey, you're gone. I didn't. Someone else did." <laughs> <laughs> she took access away days ago. Yeah. Right. So I would hate to be the enforcer because I hate the direct confrontation. Um, and I think it's because I'm empathetic in that sense, where it's like I'm a little nice. I don't like confrontation like that. Oh, uh, see me, I, for me, my biggest issue would be in the realm of that of an earner to a certain degree. Wow. Where if I'm the person who's bringing in the most within the organization, I would hate the fact that somebody else is making more than me. Because I come from, like in my background, even in, in sports and everything of that nature, yeah. I believe in meritocracy. So ultimately, if I'm the person who's bringing the most, I should be the one who's pocketing the most. Even if there's somebody who's above me, I understand how it's supposed to kick up. But soon enough, 
I'm going to begin to revolt. Like I think of in um, Goodfellas yeah. and I think about when, um, I think it was Mort was his name, when um, mm -hmm. ultimately when De Niro's character ended up killing him off. But he was the one who had found, hey, this is the heist that's going to go down over here in this airport. He d discovered everything. And he just kept pushing the, 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 the issue of, hey, you got to pay me, yeah. you got to pay me, you got to pay me. I wouldn't go about it that way, but I would let him know like, hey, you know, you wouldn't have known about none of this shit if it wasn't for me even though he didn't participate in what went down with everything, but I would be somebody who in back of my mind, I'm like, hey, I'm making all these damn plays for the organization and I'm not getting my respect. It's only a matter of time before I fucking, you know, so start to is, try to build stuff up behind your back. Yep. That's where I would, I would hate to be in that position. This is the issue with that. So I love, I love that because this is something I directly experienced. We have salespeople, yeah. right? My companies have salespeople and some of these guys are good, real good. They are not even close just because they make a lot of money and they see how much money they make. Let's mm -hmm. say one of these salespeople, they bring in a million dollars for me. Right. They, let's say they only make a hundred or 200 grand of that. So for them to see me, oh, I just made two, two, uh, a million dollars and they only got a hundred, 200 grand. They could feel some type of way, but they don't understand the cost to be the boss. Right. I also have a hundred thousand dollar payroll. I also built the organization. The only reason you have something to sell is because I, I created that for you. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be here without me. And if we were to switch shoes for one day, your job is actually easier. They could look at it from a perspective of like, this guy has never had to do a sales call ever. I'm on the phone nine hours a day making all this money for him. He's fucking sitting in his penthouse doing a podcast and somehow he's making way more money than me. This is not fair. They can look at it from that. But like at the end of the day, you want to be here. If we were to switch shoes, I could easily do what you do. You can't do what I do. 